was the initial inspiration for the documentary? The inspiration was initially to bring people forward if they can, uh, if they've had, uh, you know, some sort of an encounter, or have witnessed or have heard from other people that uh, initially this film, this documentary, uh, will bring more witnesses forward who uh, hopefully have the courage to tell, come forward and tell their story. How did you choose the sightings placed in the documentary? They're the most prominent sightings that I hear at the moment. Uh, I think we have four or five in total overall that we've recreated uh, in various locations around the country, mostly in Northern Ireland uh, and on the border regions. When did the filming commence for the documentary? Yeah, filming started uh, you know, initially in December, early December of 2018. Uh, it was pretty cold on that day. We were a bit, uh, it was hard to get things gelled and working. We were only starting off. So uh, things have progressed a long time, a long way since then. Right, so Jim, was there any obstructions during the making of the film? Yeah, we had a, a few obstructions. Uh, one for legal reasons, uh, the use of firearms. I'm only legally allowed to uh, hold firearms on my licensed permit, which is in the south of Ireland. Uh, I'm not legally entitled to have them up the north, so for um, legal reasons. There are other situations where we were filming where for uh, logistical reasons and certain areas were on private land that we had to film close to it but not on the exact location. What about drone uh, recreations? Was there any instructions from them or any problems with filming? Yeah, there was uh, one in particular. There was a recreation uh, scene during it was supposed to uh, supposed to happen in the Spurring Mountains, but uh, unfortunately, due to uh, again firearms licenses, we had to do it this side of the border in Southern Ireland. But uh, it did involve firearms as part of the sequence in the in the actual uh, recreation. So that was one side that. Uh, that wasn't, it was filmed a long way from the location, but uh, it all looked and came out perfectly. So just for the location of each of each filming, uh, that one you know, in particular was not filmed where it was supposed to be. What props were used during the filming to produce the recreations? Well, there was a, um, the big, the big foot suit itself was actually a British Army issued ghillie suit, owned by no, none other than Jim Bradley himself. Jim actually spent a lot of time spraying it black, and spraying it black, and spraying it black, <laughs> and spraying it black, and it still looked green, but he kept on spraying it black. Eventually, it, it did turn out pretty well. But the other tricky things that were that we had to do was obviously for the eyes and things like this. So many hours were spent creating the red eyes. Uh, we wanted to use practical effects. We made the red eyes out of little um, finger, finger pen lights, I think they're called, and they were used. They were, we plugged them up in trees in the forest and we attached them actually inside the, 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 the mask on the suit. So, and they, um, what locations were chosen for the film? Yeah, well obviously for the, the sightings that were covered, we wanted to, get, like Jim said, we wanted to get to as close as possible with those but we did go to other locations where there wasn't any sightings. Obviously we looked at um, certain things that were captured on, on Google and other strange anomalies. So we wanted to cover those too. So uh, we, we went up right across the Kalidar Forest, Tyrone Donegal border. It's one of the furthest trips that we had during the whole filming process. Um, that was probably the biggest area that we covered. Uh, that place goes on for 100 miles. It is huge. Maybe. It covers most of West Tyrone and Donegal, you know. So we actually did put the drone up at one stage and just to see, not even film, and just to see how big this place was. <laughs> and we swung it around a few times, and it was just, you know, there was trees, 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 and there was a mountain, and then there was more trees, 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 and then a <laughs> mountain, and then there was more trees, trees, trees. You know, that was a huge area. So places like that just to show the scale, you know, because some people think, well, Ireland's small. How can there be big in Ireland? Well, look at 
Look at this documentary when you see it. Oh, look at those areas. Um, that may change your mind. Was there a um, time scale set for completion? At the start, no. We did know that it was going to take a long time. And to be honest with you, it's the first documentary we've ever made that the, the research organisation has ever been involved with. And it was only a guess. And we said to ourselves, we started, as, as Jim said, we started in December 2018. And we just said, well, listen, we'll just put the release date for December 1st, 2019. And we sort of hope for the best. And to be honest with you, this is, tonight is October 28th. We have just wrapped filming tonight and the first filming day, filming day was December 20th, 2018. Well, what's the chances of a part two? The, this budget for this documentary was zero. It all came out of our own, own oh, pockets. Yeah. We didn't know funding, no nothing. But, I mean, if the people here involved with this, like yourself, Ben, you were involved with it, if, if people have the willpower and are prepared to do a part two, then so be it.